Dr. Ned Sharpless, you've been at the helm 10 months and you've developed four focus areas in that time. So I wanna talk about those and kind of how they intersect with your interest in aging and cancer. Um, so let's just set the stage. I've heard experts say we're gonna have a tsunami of cancer because of our aging population. How does that figure into your focus on trying to develop workforce and bring on the next generation of physician scientists? Yeah, that's a really important observation. The, um, I, I, I'm not sure it's really appreciated how strongly related the incidence of cancer is to aging. So aging in some ways is sort of the major carcinogen that people experience. So cancer is a relatively rare disease in younger patients, but becomes much more common as we age. And so uh, that epidemiology associated with the aging of the American population, the aging demographics of our society, mean that we're gonna have a lot more cancer. Uh, even, we, even if we're successful with new therapies and prevention and you know, smoking cessation and the many things that we have going on, just the demographics alone tell us that the, the actual number of cases of cancer in the United States is gonna increase for decades to come. And so we have to be ready for that. We have to understand that treating cancer in elderly population is different from treating cancer in young patients. We have to have the right kinds of doctors, the right workforce. Uh, geriatric oncology is a relatively new sort of specialty within a subspecialty and um, an area where we have to continue to develop the workforce. And then we have um, you know, the need for new therapies. It's important to have therapies that are not only effective but not toxic when treating specific populations like older patients. So for a number of reasons, uh, the sort of silver tsunami, if you will, of, of aging in the United States and the attendant cancer burden is a real challenge for the NCI going forward. And so could we face a shortage of the kinds of uh, physician scientists that we're gonna need? I think we face a shortage presently of, of doctors to take care of those patients, right? So the uh, physicians with expertise in the care of older patients with cancer, uh, be them surgeons or radiation oncologists or medical oncologists, that, that is a shortage presently and is likely to get worse. Uh, there are a few things we can do. You know, We can try and enhance the training of those existing populations to help them uh, be better able to uh, care for older patients. We can also do novel clinical trials to really focus on those populations to help better define what should be standard of, of care for those patients. But th this is a problem, as I said, that exists today that I think is likely to get worse. So that's kind of what's behind your workforce development? That's one of the driving issues. I think there are a few areas where we have uh, shortages. So uh, geriatric oncology would be one. I think uh, there's a real need for scientists in particular with training and expertise in the usage of large aggregated data sets, so big data and machine learning and the ability to you know, mine and, and interpret such data. And that is a, uh, right now, a difficult population to keep around. They are so valuable in various parts of industry that they get these data scientists to really stay and work in biology has been hard. And that's an area where the NCI is trying to empower the workforce. And then you know, there's specific areas of science. You know, we have this new growing appreciation of the importance of the immune system in cancer, both prevention and cancer therapy. And so we are now really trying to go back to the books and develop the, basics, the basic immunology expertise to underpin new cancer therapies. So you know, those are areas, three, but there are others. And, and so one of the things about workforce development isn't just how much money are you spending, but are you spending it on the right things? Are we training those you know, doctors and physicians and scientists with the skills needed in those areas?